Hi, Nigel Cotsey, stonemason and building conservator. Like for like and compatible mortars for the repair of traditional buildings. I want to look first at the qualities that a mortar should possess. So a mortar ought to serve at least three purposes. It ought to form a soft but gradually hardening bed to receive the various building materials so that these shall obtain a uniform bearing notwithstanding the irregularity of the surfaces. In the second place it ought to prevent the passage of wind and rain through the joint of the walling which largely relies on porosity and bond. And lastly it ought to have adhesive and cohesive strength enough to bind the component parts of the wall into one solid mass, not simply keep the stones apart as some people are fond of saying these days. Our mortar strength is often greatly overemphasized to the detriment of other essential mortar properties such as workability, water retentivity and bond strength and those builders who strive for high or maximum mortar strengths usually obtain inferior mortar for normal above grade masonry construction. We might add that a mortar ought to possess appropriate functional behaviour offering efficient capillarity uh, in the drying of traditional fabric and keeping it dry as well as offering potential sacrificial behaviour and a generally compatible compressive strength. Modern NHL mortars generally do not meet these criteria. Earth lime and hot mixed or air or feebly hydraulic lime mortars meet all of the above criteria and were the preferred mortars of the building crafts historically and for so long as it was that the crafts designed the mortars. Their autonomy in this regard was eroded from the later 19th century onwards. Workability was the standard historically. And we see this understanding reflected in, in modern ASTMS guidance. Workability is the most important property of a plastic mortar. Workable mortars can be spread easily with the trowel into the separations and crevices of the masonry unit. Workable mortar also supports the weight of the masonry units when placed without squeeze uh, or undue squeeze and facilitates alignment. It adheres to vertical masonry surfaces uh, and readily extrudes from the mortar joints when the mason applies pressure to bring the unit into alignment. Workability is a combination of several properties including plasticity, consistency, cohesion and adhesion which have defied exact laboratory measurement. The mason can best assess the workability by observing the response of the mortar to the trowel. Good workability is essential for maximum bond with the masonry units. Traditional mortar report proportions just need to deal with this because this has been substantially ignored over the last 40 and 50 years and before once cement came into play. Earth lime mortars, 10, 5, 10% 10 quick lime addition generally, sometimes mixed at one slate lime to three, typically at one slate lime to five. Uh, pure and feebly hydraulic limes, one part quick lime to two or three parts of aggregate, giving one to one, one to two, or two to three slate lime aggregate proportions. All rich, uh, or many mortars are richer in lime than this, but very, very rarely leaner than this. Three aggregate was considered that the most that one quick lime could take without compromising workability and performance in the mortar. With powdered quick lime, one to four will work, giving a one to two proportion in the, in the last analysis. Moderately to eminently hydraulic lime, these two were mixed much more strongly, so one part quick lime to two parts aggregate, or one to one, depending upon hydraulicity. The more hydraulic, the less expansion upon slaking, as only the free lime can slake and expand. It is essential as a general principle that traditional mortar proportions are respected and observed in modern conservation practice. These were arrived at during thousands of years of craft practice and offer optimal functional performance. But based on and my own experience and observation, obviously, but, but also upon my uh, critical reading of some 300 texts from France, Spain, uh, the UK and from North America. These I would say I want to lay out what are the, the, the essential traditional mortars. So we have earth mortars, clay bearing subsoil improved or otherwise with sand or other aggregate and well tempered, typically 12% clay, high volume of silt which is very important and of general fi generally fine texture. Used for masonry construction, plastering, daubing, floors with additives. I want to focus more though on earth lime mortars, typically 10% lime, sometimes more, added to a clay and silt bearing subsoil as above, 
uh, usually added as quicklime. Masonry construction, uh, all of the uses to which we might put mortars above ground. And a few little examples, York House, high status house, house built throughout with earth lime mortars, finished with uh, lime, often pure lime or minimally aggregated lime and hair, plaster finishes and pointing. Some of the mortars from within York House. Clay, the, the, the lime content varying according to purpose as we see. An analysis of one of the plaster mortars through, from within York House showing the preponderance of very, very fine material. This system, of course, applied also to timber frame buildings almost universally. And here a house with a pure lime, pure haired lime pointing over earth lime bedding mortars and, and similarly plasters. A typical earth lime mortar from the North Yorkshire region but also typical in France, where actually earth lime masonry continued longer than it did in the UK and until relatively recently in many cases, and is a universal throughout France. Spain, we have Valencia here, a merchant's house, earth lime bedding mortars, uh, hot mixed lime pointing mortars. And in China too, the, the revival of the use of pure or nearly pure lime mortars pointing over earth lime mortars within the Great Wall of China. And in practice, deep packing in an earth-built church here with earth lime mortars, which don't require carbonation as such, and then pointing with the hot mix lime mortars that do require carbonation. And some data, there is very little out there, but some data showing the, 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 the effects of, of a little bit of lime added into earth mortars. Then we have hot mixed air or feebly hydraulic lime mortars, uh, general building the same purposes really as earth lime mortars were put to in combination with lime mortars but here the mortars all uh, hot mixed lime mortars uh, and these were ubiquitous. Uh, putty lime mortars we have putty lime slaked with minimum volumes of water and sieved or screened and so on. Uh, these and made to a bread dough like consistency not a, a slurry and much like a hot mix lime mortar in character, moldable, cohesive, adhesive, and without free water. This was used on its own as a mortar, very rarely as a binder for, for gauge brickwork, very fine stone ashlar, fine plaster finish coats, tuck pointing. Uh, it became used, incorporated as a binder when cement was added to the mortars or gypsum in the 20th century. And here this, this whole building built with just pure lime mortar uh, pure lime putty lime mortars in 1726 and still in very fine order. Here an analysis of a, a pure lime or an essentially pure lime, two parts lime, one uh, limestone dust with a lot of hair, 400 years old. Uh, here an example of <coughs> a pure lime, no aggregate added other than what might be in the limestone itself, uh, and pointed into a wall, uh, a very plastic, moldable, beautiful material, and, and actually setting very fast. So we then have hot mix moderately or eminently hydraulic lime mortars, either artificial, uh, using pots lands and air limes, or NHL. And these were for underground, underwater works, places where a pure lime mortar wouldn't set, docks, quays, seawalls. But it's important to say, pots hot mix lime mortars were generally preferred over NHLs. And really the only use that we can say NHL was the preferred material for was concrete footings and concrete floors. Uh, some above, construct, above ground construction in the later 19th century and into the early 20th century quickly realized to be a mistake. Sadly, it has become routine in use for general conservation work above ground since the 1990s in the UK. And this, is, this has rippled out around the world. We then have natural cement, waterworks, cast mouldings, fortifications. Uh, when used in an exterior render, which it frequently was, did not prove terribly successful. And then cement lime mortars, which initially in craft practice, around 15% or 1 15th, sorry, of, of, uh, of cement might be added. And this is being treated very much as a pozzolanic mortar in this instance. Here, the cement kiln in, in natural cement kiln, the only one surviving, and cement lime buildings in very good health in, in North America. Uh, a contrast between the, the traditional uh, 
NH, NHL was semi-hydraulic, feebly hydraulic lines used in the UK uh, for above ground construction compared to the compressive strengths demanded of a modern NHL on TET. Uh, Cristiano's very important research demonstrating the uh, the variability between the brands uh, available of, of NHLs, what it doesn't demonstrate is that these brands also vary uh, perennially within themselves from one batch to another potentially. Uh, and these some of the effects we're seeing in the UK of uh, liberal NHL use, this work done 20 years ago with NHLs. And we see it, we are seeing exactly the same patterns of decay and degradation and wetness that we generally see when cement is used. Uh, you can look at these examples later at your own will. Shrinking away from stones, allowing water in, uh, no sacrificial behavior, wetting up of buildings. This building, two weeks after repointing with a hot mixed airline, had dried. Uh, in this case, a, a, a round chalk wall rendered with NHL 3.5 two years later collapses because of saturation. Uh, and the reason for this, perhaps one of the main reasons for this, this important research by David Wiggins, we see that traditional lime rich airline mortars or feebly hydraulic lime mortars have very high effective porosity and much higher indeed than NHLs have. And when we look at an NHL mortar pore size distribution alongside a cement uh, mortar, we see that there is very little difference in pore size distribution and very little difference in effective porosity. Wet cement buildings, wet NHL buildings, dry uh, hot mixed lime pointed buildings. Wet buildings again, the top two. Uh, the bottom, the stone here is exactly the same geology, but the left hand building, a grade one listed building repointed with NHL is perennially wet. The right hand building pointed with hot mixed mortars is dry. No sacrificial behavior, even with a gauge 50-50 airline, say SDA two, mortar in this case and the building which was dry when we began working on it uh, is now 20 years later perennially wet. The wetting up and per permanent wetting up as a consequence probably of the introduction of air entrainers which removes all capillarity from the mortar. These areas there the hot mix mortar dried within 12 hours of placement of the hot mix mortar. Here, a building pointed with hot mix lime mortars, and then two years later, a very dry building, although it may not have been perceived to have been wet in the first place. A uh, hot mix mortar building done in the winter. Uh, here, a building before repointing with hot mix lime mortars, and then lime washing as before with a pigmented lime wash. And here, all hot mix mortars, and, and then lime washing. So, to sum up, the typical compressive strength of an airline mortar after three months uh, is between 0 0.7 and 1.3 MPA, but can be up to 2 MPA with a hot mixed airline mortar and sometimes more than this. Earth lime and hot mixed lime mortars uh, or other airline mortars made to historic lime aggregate proportions are economic to produce. They offer mortars of eminent workability, encouraging good and efficient workmanship. They offer optimal water retentivity an excellent bond strength as well as consistent extent of bond. They demand much less aftercare than other forms of lime. They are tenacious, they offer appropriate durability so long as traditional building detail is respected and maintained. The addition of small or even large volumes of Potsdam enhances strength, durability and speed of set to, cert to a certain extent without compromising workability or other essential characteristics. They offer high effective porosity, keeping building fabric dry and thermally efficient and reducing the need for repair or replacement of building elements. In pursuit of carbon reduction, earth lime and lime rich hot mix mortars are not only the most appropriate like for like and compatible mortars for the conservation and repair of traditional buildings, but for sustainable mainstream new build as well.